What is up guys, JPR Tech here and this is the Puerto Rican living in Japan talking about photography, videography and all the tech that affects our lives. We want to do it for cheap or even better for free. So if you like the content in the channel, consider subscribing because I will be pouring out videos weekly, cinematic videos, how to videos and of course reviews. But today, today I'm so excited. I'm starting a new series and I really need your guys' help. I really want your opinion. What do you guys think about just making videos of me talking to you guys personally? Well, I'm talking to my camera right now, which is a little strange, but when I'm uploaded, I'll be talking to you guys anyway. So talking to you guys about the how I made my videos. This is gonna be a series discussing more of my workflow, the gear that I used, the preparation that I had towards the cinematic videos that I have. You know, when I have a lot of those BGM kind of cinematic videos showcasing what the Canon EOS M can do with raw magic lantern goodness, as well as my Fujifilm X-H1, which I love. I just love the colors out of the camera. I'm just recording me right now with the 23 mil F2 lens wide open of course, with Eterna. Now, getting back to our topic, which is a series that I'm gonna be making, I really wanna know from you guys right off the bat if this is a good idea or a bad idea, pointless or helpful. And for the first video in this series, I wanna talk about the do short doc, actually my first. So everything is a first. First short documentary and my for a series. This is a video I uploaded on my channel. It's called The Tuner. It's just a very, very short documentary getting to know the life and the work of a tuner here in Japan. And we just get an insight on his thoughts on what piano means for him and what could it mean for us. So it has a pretty lively message, positive. I really enjoyed making that. And to tell you the truth, guys, about the preparation, there was none. You know, I always carry my gear with me in my camera bag. Got it. Oh my goodness, that was scary. What in the world? Oh, that scared me. Whoo, my hair is sticking up. Where was I? All right, so in for that documentary, not a lot of preparation was taking place. You know, I always carry my gear with me just in case there's something I can shoot. I'll take it and make a video of it. I had no planning whatsoever. I was basically just trying to get all the steps, all the procedures of his tuning, as well as different angles as much as I could. I shot everything on my Canon EOS M with just two lenses, the kit, 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens, the zoom lens, as well as the TT Artisan 35 millimeter f1.4 for Canon. The TT Artisan is not stabilized, so I really had to be selective with that lens and I had to use the, like, the edge of the piano to hold my hands and the camera or maybe place my elbows on top of the piano to stabilize the footage as much as I could. And it, I think it worked out great. The 15 to 45 has stabilization, so it helps smooth out a lot of the shots. But since we're indoors, there's not a lot of light. Uh, it was a little bit noisy and you could see that towards the beginning of the video where I was mainly using that lens a lot but at, towards the end, I just ended up switching over to the TT Artisan. I shot mainly in 3K for the close-up shots, but also to get a little bit of mo more of a field of view, I had to switch over to 5K FRTP. There were a couple shots that I shot in 1080p as well, but I just wasn't feeling the vibe. It was a little bit too, um, too much aliasing. For 1080p, I really wanna get up close to help reduce a lot of those details and artifacts um, with pretty much for all the close-up shots, I only shot 10, uh, 5K FRTP and 3K. Okay guys, really quick, I just forgot to mention in the video an important tool that I used in that documentary and that was for the very last clip. I used my trusty Fujifilm X-H1 that you see back here and that is the A cam that's been shooting this whole behind the scenes video. I just wanted to throw that in there. I didn't want to leave 
him out of the picture. It was an important part, an important shot. So I was glad I was able to get it in there. And uh, yeah, let's continue the behind the scenes. The whole vibe was just so organic. Watching his old rusty toolbox with all the tools coming out that he just kept grabbing and he completely bared that piano naked. He just completely exposed it and started working on the strings and whatnot. And it just looked awesome. And I just had to start recording and I was recording a lot of just B-roll. And I wasn't thinking documentary yet. But it was just, the, the vibe was just so right that I told him towards the end, I'm like, dude, I got to get your comments, your opinion on this kind of work, this line of work. And I, if I could, I want to make a documentary out of this. And he's like, sure, of course. He was up to it. Really cool. So very nice of him. Unfortunately, in the site, we didn't have time. When he finished his work, uh, we weren't able to stay there to do the interview. I really wanted to ask him those questions, sitting there in front of the piano, looking at the camera, or actually looking at me with the camera off the side, pointing at him would have been really nice, but we couldn't. I actually ended up interviewing him outside in the parking lot and just using my iPhone as a microphone to record his answers. And then in post, I just trimmed and clipped and tweaked all his um, hit the voiceover on top of the B-roll. Unfortunately, that's what it ended up being. I really wish I could have done a little bit more, make it a more official documentary, having him talk to us, but um, not bad. The result, the overall result was not bad considering that it was just an unplanned doc film that came out. So we made something out of nothing. And after filming was done, I got home, I threw all my stuff into the MOV app, and you know my workflow. I have a video in my channel talking about my workflow. I basically just add a little bit of sharpness, reduce the chromatic aberration, and uh, that's about it. The most important thing is to export in DNG lossless, and that's it. In DaVinci, I'm able to see those sequence as a video clip, and pretty much, in a few words, again, my workflow on DaVinci is in my channel as well. You could check that out uh, to get more in depth on how to work on those, uh, you know, MLV files in DaVinci. But in short, I just convert everything to Blackmagic Film, slap my favorite lot on it, the Phantom Utopia lot, and that's it, just tweaked the highlights and shadows and a little bit, you know, the tint and temp, the temperature, and that's about it. I didn't do any complex detail editing whatsoever. It was just a run and gun shoot and exported and imported to YouTube. That's about it. But I'm really appreciative of all the feedback, all the compliments that are starting to pour in. Really grateful for them. And I hope that through this video and this series, you are able to get a more in-depth look and maybe some even information about the places that I'm recording, I'm shooting at and what the gear I'm using at that shoot. You know, I want to take the time to explain that to you guys in this series. Of course, I could do that in one video, have, you know, kind of like Zeke, where he talks about the gear he's using, the settings, and then we have all the B-roll sequence. And then again, he starts doing the voiceover and talking about his gear and stuff. But I just thought maybe some people out there just want to see what the camera can do. Some just want to relax and enjoy relaxing music with some cinetic sights and whatnot. And I thought, yeah, I'll just divide the two videos. I'll have my explanation video in this series that I'm doing right now. And then just have my playlist of all the cinematic videos by the Canon and the Fujifilm. If you guys think that's a good idea, let me know. Hit smash that like button. Let me know in the comment section down below. Or if I should just stop, just put them all together. If you prefer that route, then yeah, I will do that as well. For me, it doesn't matter. I just really want to continue to put out content for you guys. And also at the same time, want to answer everyone's questions because people, we all have questions about videos that we see here on YouTube. So please keep them coming and I'll try to bring the answers to you guys and learn as well while we are all trying to make the best of what we got. 
So guys, thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you guys on my, not only my next video, but on the next video in this series. I don't know what I'm going to call this series. Let's just call it behind the scenes. And then we'll see whatever the name comes up. And uh, I can ask you guys, let me know what's, what's a good name for this series that I can call it. But thank you guys so much for watching the first video on this series and hope to make more. You all have a good one. Happy shootings. Peace.